Welcome to worship this week. You're at home worship. We trust it's truly going to be worship by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the season of Advent, and one of the old church traditions is the Advent wreath. And so maybe you have your Advent wreath, and you can go ahead and get that. And it's going to cut to a litany um, for beginning your worship, lighting your Advent wreath. If you don't have one, that's no problem. Just grab a candle. So it's going to cut to that part right now. We begin our worship with Luther's morning prayer, and it's a lovely little prayer, but it's also a prayer that we all pray, all of us, wherever we are, on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., and we invite you at that time of common prayer to join us in prayer. So now, let us pray. I give give thanks thanks to you, you, Heavenly Father, Father, through through Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me today from sin and all evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And right away in our worship, we get to why it is that we are free to worship without fear, why it is that the wicked foe doesn't have any power over us. Because the wicked foe power is death, which has been co-opted by sin. And Jesus freely forgives your and my sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. God of mercy, we We confess confess that we have have sinned against you and against against others, both knowingly and unknowingly. You call us to love and we hate. You call us to peace and we bring violence. You call us to be generous and we are greedy. Lord, for these sins, and all that we confess now in the silence of our hearts, we have merited your wrath. Forgive us, Lord. And now receive your absolution. In a moment we will sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. This is a prayer your Lord and Savior cannot help but answer. 
Emmanuel means God with us. In Jesus Christ, God has overcome everything that would separate us from the love of God. Receive Emmanuel, God with you now, in the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. And so our worship continues now with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and thank you, Sandy and Carol and Daryl, for leading us in our hymn. Let us pray. Loving Lord, when, when we have, have strayed, strayed you, you call, have called, called us to come, come home to you. With all our hearts, we return to you and gratefully welcome your gentle love for the sake of the one whose spirit lives in us, Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Amen. And our lector this week is Kay. Thank you, Kay. Our psalm for today is Psalm 130. The psalm will be read responsibly by verse. Out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. O Lord, o Lord hear, hear my voice. voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. 
For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. <clears throat> Today's scripture is from Joel, chapter 2. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God and there is no other and my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In today's scripture, the prophet Joel asks us to bring something really difficult to worship. And he's not talking about money. And he isn't even talking about that rare free evening to spend on some joyless committee bickering about something like the color of the sanctuary carpet. No, Joel's talking about something that's much harder to bring to worship. Our hearts. Our hearts as they really are. And all of them too breaks and all. And we have no shortage of things that break our heart these days, do we? Loved ones we can't visit, loved ones who have died, trips that have been canceled, holiday gatherings that have been called off or are on the chopping block. Tragically, those broken hearts and dirty windows that make life difficult to see, to quote John Prine, God rest his soul, they are a fact of life. There is no shortage of them. And yet, despite this fact, when it comes to worship, we think that we've got to mend our hearts before we can come to worship, before we can have an experience of God's power. At the very least, we think we've got to hide those cracks in our heart, perhaps because we're worried that will offend the pious in the congregation. In today's scripture, though, the prophet Joel declares good riddance to all of that bad theology. And the truth is, the, the sorry state of affairs, this sort of uh, charade you put on when you come to worship, these lies we tell ourselves, we've got to get our heart in right shape. The church has some of the blame for this sorry state of affairs, but not all of the blame. You know, there's that cult of positivity out there, isn't there? That everything has to be good all of the time. 
and this constant messaging, it makes us hard, it makes it hard to bring our broken hearts to worship. It makes it hard for us to be honest about our own broken hearts, doesn't it? But we all know that's a little bit of a, a shallow blame, isn't it? Because the problem goes deeper. Because the truth is, these, this aversion to telling the truth about our broken heart, it's found a welcome place in our own heart. You know, the truth is, our aversion to admitting that our hearts are broken, it runs so deep that I had trouble including the, the possibility of canceled Christmas parties. We hate to admit that our hearts have breaks. We hate to admit it to others. We hate to admit it to ourselves. And so is it any wonder we don't want to bring our broken hearts before the Lord? The prophet Joel, though, will have none of that. Return to the Lord with all your heart, he tells us. And that includes fasting. He mentions fasting. But it's not because Joel's prescribing some discipline to get your heart in the right shape. It's because Joel's describing. He's describing what it's like when your heart is really broken. And on those times, you don't need someone telling you to fast, do you? In fact, it's the other way around. You need someone telling you to eat. Because in those times when your heart's broken, it's hard to take nourishment, isn't it? And yet, declares Joel, even on those days, God still wants all of your heart. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So did you notice what Joel told you to bring to worship? Because it wasn't pristine hearts, was it? And it wasn't rebuilt, remodeled, or rehabbed hearts. No, it was broken hearts. All of our hearts, with all of the weeping and mourning that comes along with them. Rend your heart, tear your heart and not your clothing, says the prophet. Our Sunday best, as it's called, is not your finest duds. It's not like what I'm wearing right now. Your Sunday best is what you wear when your heart is broken because that's what God works with best. Like when you wear pajamas all day because you can't get yourself out of bed. Or when you wear the same shirt from last night because you didn't sleep all night. Or that pair of pants with crumpled up Kleenexes stuffed in the pockets because you've been crying all day. That's Sunday best in the eyes of the Lord. In fact, if you're watching this at home, your Sunday best is probably whatever you're wearing right now. The clothes you wear when you're not trying to impress anyone. Because you can't impress anyone. Because your heart is too broken. That is exactly what the Lord is after, declares Joel. You see, you're ready for worship. You're all the way ready. And right now, too. Life in the time of COVID and all. Broken heart and all. Now, we're afraid to show those broken places in our hearts because we're afraid if anyone sees them that maybe they won't love us anymore, that, that they'll think we're damaged goods. You see, but we've been too busy trying to whip up love that we've forgotten how love is stirred. And Advent is all about stir. Stir up your power and come, O Lord. You see, love doesn't happen once you've made yourself lovable. In fact, that's a fine way never to experience love. No, real love happens when you find that you've been loved, that you are loved, that you have been loved all along, that you were loved even when you couldn't love yourself because your heart was too broken. Well, beloved, you are loved. God is love. God has loved you all along from the foundation of the world. And this love of God has loved you to into existence out of nothing. All of this right now has been loved into existence out of nothing. And this love of God continues loving you into existence right now as you hear these words. And this love of God will go on loving you even when your broken heart beats its last. And then this love of God will love you all the way into eternity. God is not afraid of those broken places in your life. Not in your past, not in your present, not even in your future. 
You see, because you have been covered with the love of God poured out in Jesus Christ. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, declares the Lord. And right before that punchline, Joel tells us that God's people will never again be put to shame. But this is not because life will no longer break your heart. It's because now when that happens, you will have somewhere to put your broken heart. You will have somewhere to put that shame that would keep you from bringing all your heart to God. Tuck it away in the wounded side of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he died to take away anything that might separate you from the love of God. When God tells you to bring your whole heart, God means it. God can handle whatever's on your heart. Whatever's breaking your heart apart, God can handle it. And when that promise mends your heart that's been rent asunder, why then you will be able to sing along with the famous words of the psalmist, not the psalm we heard today, but the one we hear on Ash Wednesday. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. That's Psalm 51. And when you're ready to sing along with that psalm, while you're as ready for worship as they come, it's Advent. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us in the thick of it. God with us in the worst of it. God with us even when we're at our worst, when we're at our lowest and least lovable. God says, bring me all your heart because I want all of you because I love all of you. Hang in there. You're ready. All of this broken stuff is the raw material for holiness, the makings for a truly holy advent, the the sacrifice God can't keep away from, the rocky ground of holy ground. The response to the word is a response of faith. So with the whole church, let us confess the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so now, on account of Christ's mercy, let us bring our prayers for the Church, the world, and all in need before the Lord. And our prayers of intercession have a call and response, a litany after each one of the prayers. I will conclude with, Lord, in your mercy, and the response is, hear our prayer. And now let us pray. O come, our Emmanuel, God with us. Come to us, Lord. Let us to know the joy of your salvation the hope of your deliverance, the certainty of your final victory. Lord, when we grow weary, put the words, these words of this hymn on our heart. May we never tire of waiting upon you and looking for your arrival in our lives, in our church, and in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O come, O come, our Emmanuel, and what makes you God with us is how inclusive this us is. And it's not just us ourselves. It's not just us, our family. It's not just us, our church family. But it's us, the world, the world that Jesus has come to save. And it is when we can truly say, come to us, O Emmanuel, that your promise will be fulfilled. And that is what we are waiting on, O Lord. 
We ask you to remove the blinders from our eyes that would, set, that would tell us we are separate from whatever other group it may be. Because the us you have determined to come to includes all. Your embrace is wide. Lord, we ask for this work in our lives, in the lives of everyone in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O come, O come, our Emmanuel. And Lord, this vision that you've given us, this mission that you've called us to, it can be a daunting one. And so we give thanks that it is not ours alone, although we ask your blessing upon our humble portion of this mission. We ask that in our lives, that you might make us to be a people who share your love, who embody it to others. And in our mission as a church, spread out though we may be right now, that it may be a place where all find welcome, all know your love. And we give thanks for those who share in this mission with us. We want to pray especially for Oak Street Baptist and St. John AME, Messiah, Bethany, and Peace Lutheran, this synod we are a part of, and the congregations and people that make it up, our Bishop Amy, the ELCA we are a part of, and the people and congregations that make this denomination up, and our Bishop Elizabeth, and all who bear your name, Christian. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And so now in the silence of our hearts, with thanks, we bring those places before you where you have come and we have known your healing touch, your welcoming embrace. We bring those before you with thanksgiving and at the same time, with broken hearts and hope, we bring before those places where we long for your coming more powerfully. We do this now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And Lord, all of this troubled life, the temptation is for us to bring ourselves to you. It's hard to trust that you come to us in our lives. And so the temptation is to try and st strap our boots and climb to you. It's a fool's errand. And ultimately, it gets your work all backward. And those who know this most fully are those who finally couldn't do anything, those who died. And you came to them. You came to them even when they could no longer call upon you. And you called upon them. You said their name like you said Mary, Mary's name on that first Easter. And the sheep, they know the sound of your voice. And they rise and follow you to life eternal, to green pastures and still waters. And Lord, those saints in light who have experienced this call, now they sing your praises without end. And we humbly ask you to unite our humble worship with theirs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so now we raise these prayers and all that go unspoken to you, O God, in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. And so now our worship continues with the thanksgiving for the word, and this also has a call and response. After each one of the thanksgivings, I will include for I will conclude for your word of life, O God, and the response is we give you thanks. You we give you thanks and praise. And so now let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness. You called forth beauty from chaos. You brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity. Water on the desert's journey. A pathway home from exile. Wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God. We, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. And through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, 
life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love for your word of life, O God. We, we give, give you thanks and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. And so now be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And so now, uh, let us sing a hymn, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. receive your blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. And so now our worship concludes with the Lord's Prayer. And on Sunday evenings at 5.30, or Saturday evenings at 5.30, sorry, and Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., we all pray this prayer um, together wherever we may be, and we invite you to join us in those times of common prayer. But now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we invite you to stick around for announcements right after this, but now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, well, thank you for worshiping with us this week. If it is your first week, a special word of welcome. Uh, we hope that you'll reach out to us because it's nice to be in touch. All right, uh, just a few announce announcements. The first is thank you to everyone who contributed to the LSI Christmas family sponsoring that we were doing. It was awesome. Our goal was 10 families and we brought in enough uh, to sponsor 14. And that was like 28 children all together and they're folks too. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Huge thank you. Uh, you know, we've got that COVID fund. So if you'd like to contribute to it or could use it or know someone who could, just be in touch with us about that. Otherwise, uh, the Advent wreaths, we have just a couple left. And we want to get them out to everybody. So if you've been thinking, oh, that'd be cool, but you haven't reached out or whatever, uh, just do. Won't be putting us out any. And if it's the if they're gone by then, we'll just let you know. But we do have two left. And so we hope that if you'd like one, you'll let us know. Let's see. Otherwise, then, if you would like to help with the worship service, be one of our singers, a cantor, or one of the readers, a lector, that'd be great. We'd love to have you. So just reach out to us. We can uh, coordinate that. Otherwise, that's it. Next week is the third week of Advent, and the passage of Scripture is Isaiah 61, and you know it because Jesus has taught it to you. It's the scripture he chose for his very first sermon. So that's what we have next week. That's everything. Blessings. Have a great week. Hang in there. Bye.